Hi guys, and welcome back to Switch Up. Thanks so much to Marty, our newest writer at the Switch Up team, for writing this review, and to the developers for the review copy. Mechs are neat, aren't they? The idea of piloting a dauntingly huge robot capable of mass amounts of destruction definitely has its appeals. We've all seen or at least know of games and shows featuring mechs and their heroic pilots in action, and it's easy to imagine how fun and exciting it all must be. Switch owners now have a new giant robot game to consider with Damascus Gear Operation Osaka arriving on the eShop. Unlike other mech games though, this one sees you dealing with a much more personal problem than say, saving the world. Is Operation Osaka a thrilling mech experience? Ugh, in its own right? Or just a rusted heap of old parts? Let's find out. Decades ago, humans piloting hulking combat mechs known as Gears were at war with Rage, an artificial intelligence controlling dormant pilotless Gears. Today, a handful of locations around the world have been cleared of Rage and are re-established as safe havens for humanity. You live in Japan after Rage has already been wiped from the surface, but it still festers underground, waiting for the right moment to unearth and lay ruinous waste to Japan anew. At the beginning of the game, you inherit an operator android and a gear of your own from your recently deceased parents. You also inherit all of your parents' debt. Mountainous, overwhelming, crippling debt. If it goes unpaid, you can say goodbye to your belongings, your home, everything you hold dear, and even everything you don't. With your operator's help, you'll need to work mercenary jobs underground to amass parts and money, improve your gear, enter ranked televised arena matches to improve your standing and gain new clearances, and then take on more dangerous missions than before while diving deeper and deeper below ground. Rinse and repeat. And that's to say nothing of the mysterious woman speaking to you in your dreams, implying that something more important than clearing a debt is at stake here. Simply put, you're the gear pilot who must grind their gear the hardest, and establishes your time limit, as every time you enter the arena or partake in the missions, you spend one day. Failing too many missions or arena matches results in a lack of progress and income, and at that point you can kiss your assets goodbye. There is just so much dialogue in this game, and I found it just didn't hook me in. The operator is either unnaturally sprouting exposition or making a failed attempt at endearment. Now, beyond having to mash the A button to get past this, you'll find that there is in fact more to Operation Osaka's gameplay. You have a customizable super fighting robot after all. Your gear's head, body and shoulders, legs and arms may all be mixed and matched as you acquire newer, better parts. You'll have interchangeable weapons to select from too, one in each hand and one mounted on your back. Weapons come in different forms like swords, machine guns, rifles, grenades, lasers and more. Every equipable part has its own stats which contribute to the overall makeup of your gear, and you'll usually have some simple choices to make such as aiming for physical defense and evasion versus durability and speed. Many mech games overcomplicate the outfitting process, but Operation Osaka keeps it relatively simple while still allowing you to make personalized decisions. You'll eventually unlock bonus specs that work apart from your gear setup too. With your gear all up to date, you're ready to head underground to make money and find spare parts, or to the arena to gain rank and draw attention. I may have found grievance with the storytelling, but I'd look past that and be a happy camper if Operation Osaka's combat made for a fun experience. Unfortunately, it doesn't. At the beginning of the game, everything is too easy. The various floors you explore while out on mission are so empty and boring that your operator actually acknowledges and apologizes for it. Despite enemies suddenly popping into existence from out of nowhere, the early game missions presented zero threat. I wanted to approach combat in this game with a plan of action at first, but I soon realized that my enemies just couldn't hurt me enough for me to care. I could tank my way through just about anything thrown at me. Any strafing or dodging around was solely my attempt to make the game more interesting to play. I did get a laugh out of what I came to call the mech do -si do but it offered me no benefit other than removing a touch of monotony. My weapons didn't feel fun to swing or fire, it was no challenge and the writing just kept grating on me. Then, with a rank increase, the game's difficulty suddenly skyrocketed. My damage output tanked, and instead of dancing with me, the enemies started giving me the cold shoulder. Then I encountered the lasering. To be blunt, that was not fun. Without any options to adjust difficulty, or really any gameplay options at all, that was simply it. 
This was by design. My complaints are many and my compliments few. A tried and true, if repetitive gameplay loop is present here, and the streamlined gear customization is appreciated, but with the dull storytelling, lackluster combat, barren level design, and a quite blatantly unfair difficulty spike, gameplay scores a slightly disappointing 10 out of 20. Operation Osaka's general controls are simple and inoffensive. Left analog stick for movement, R and L for boosting and targeting, and face buttons for dashing about and utilizing your three weapons. If you dislike this layout then unfortunately it's too bad you can't change it. Free movement has this odd sort of gumminess to it, specifically with directional alignment. It feels like your gear wants to snap to one of the four cardinal directions while not locking on to anything in particular and this too cannot be turned off. There are no paths to travel through in any of these four directions, making this control decision feel out of place. On the flip side, I commend the decision to have weapons continuously fire by holding down the face button, as having to rapidly tap fire to shoot a pistol or swing a sword wouldn't have felt great here at all. Control score an average 12 out of 20. Visually, it's not looking good. Even if the game was aiming for a gritty mech aesthetic, the graphics just feel disappointing, as if they'd come from a past console generation. The different expressions of your operator are misaligned, causing her to wiggle around awkwardly as she speaks to you. While piloting, it's hard to remember that this is a huge combat mech due to Operation Osaka's overhead view, which isn't even enough to see all of the threats in the area. The zoomed-in lock-on camera doesn't take walls into account, adding to the frustration. Now the game does suggest that you should release lock-on at certain situations for better visibility, but is that to the benefit of the experience or an attempt to sidestep an issue? It could go either way, really. To the game's credit, the HUDs fit the mech aesthetic well and doesn't obscure the field of vision, even allowing you to hide the portraits of those speaking to you. I also never observed any slowdown as I played, though I'd be very surprised if these graphics cause my Switch any strain. The visual score 8 out of 20. In terms of audio, these are the first sounds you hear after starting up the game. I took this for bad first impression, believing that the audio could only go uphill from there. The game's default volume was very loud indeed, but there were other problems following the necessary adjustments. The music ranges from forgettable to downright bad. The sound effects never impressed me, the impact of weaponry and gear destructions could have been more notable or of higher quality, and I was forced to listen to the loud repetitive boosting noise if I wanted to move at any reasonable pace. The entire game's delivery is spoken out in Japanese. However, the static filter they've used over all the dialogue in your gear, however well it fits the aesthetic, is not very pleasant to listen to. Audio scores 10 out of 20. Damascus Gear Operation Osaka costs around £15, €18.99 or $19.99 and at that price there are far too many Switch games at or beneath it that I would eagerly recommend above this one. The gameplay loop is tried and true and it would perhaps last you a healthy 10 to 15 hours or so if you're enjoying the experience. There are over a thousand parts you may find and equip to your gear so that may certainly keep you busy. Every game day features unique spoken dialogue too so there's a lot there if it's your cup of tea. Still the price feels too steep when taking other Switch games into account. Value scores 14 out of 20. Overall then, I wanted to like Operation Osaka, but it is a flawed experience that I simply can't recommend at this time. Nothing stands out as a shining positive trait of the game, and many aspects come off as poorly designed and rough around the edges, or just straight up not fun. If the game's problems don't bother you, then I can at least say that it will last you more than some of the other offerings in the eShop library. <laughs> Damascus Gear gets a switch up score of 54%. Thanks so much to Marty for doing this review. I think you did a great job. I hope my edits are in line with your thoughts and that we did a good job on the video. Thanks to our patrons who support the channel every single month. I think we've got 83 patrons now, which is incredible. Remember, we still have a few copies of free games to give away to new patrons. Even if you just want to jump on for a dollar, we appreciate the support. And for all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya!